sex. Sex and libido. A lot of people are struggling with their sex lives, getting an erection, getting aroused, men and women. The brain and sex. I imagine you have people come to you and go, listen, me and my wife, me and my partner, me and my husband, we've stopped having sex. I've lost my libido. When you hear that, and you offer people advice on libido and sex. What is you what get your brain right? Your sex life gets better. In large part, it's about blood flow. And if you're having erectile dysfunction or low libido, um, you got to go. Well, why? Is what are the risk factors with that? And many of them relate to what's going on in your brain. And I, I so often people go. I did everything you said, and my wife's so much happier with our sex life. Um, you have to check your hormones. I think that's very important. You have to deal with whatever sexual trauma might be there. Um, the biggest sex organ in the body is your brain. If there's no forethought, there's no foreplay. And so <laughs> it's about the decisions that you make. What else do I need to know about sex? If I'm trying to get my partner in the mood and I'm trying to make them aroused, you it know- It depends on their brain. Okay, right. So if your partner has a very busy frontal lobe, that part called the anterior cingulate gyrus, you can't go, come on, let's have sex. Because you've met people with the automatic no, that no matter what you say, they're going to say the opposite of it or they're going to fuss with it. I mean, it's like, it's a nice day today. Oh, no, it was nicer yesterday. I mean, even simple things. So you're going to want to have sex? No. Um, I was at this lecture once and somebody came up to me at a break and said, you've helped me so much. Um, I thought my wife just didn't love me. And what I realized is that part of her brain was just working too hard. So now I ask everything in the opposite. It's like, oh, like if I wanted to go to the store, she'd never want to go with me. And I'd go, so now what I do is I go, I'm gonna go to the store, you probably don't want to come. What do you mean I don't want to come? Of course I want to come. He said, but it doesn't sound right to say, well, you probably don't want to have sex. Oh, I go, okay, I know her brain, do this. And I gave him natural things to boost serotonin. So I said, take her out for a pasta dinner. So I'm not a fan of pasta generally, except for these people. Take her out for a pasta dinner because pasta increases serotonin. Then take her for a walk around the lake because exercise increases serotonin. Then give her a piece of dark chocolate, not too many, because if you get her too many, she'll have no need for you. But Dark chocolate has PEA in it, phenylethylamines, that alerts your brain that something fun is about to happen. And then put on a little baby powder because baby powder, it's been shown scientifically, is a natural aphrodisiac for women. Because what do women unconsciously associate to baby powder? Babies. And unconsciously they want one. And then rubber back and don't ask for anything directly. And from about day four to about day 18 of her menstrual cycle, you're likely to get lucky. Why from day four to day 18? Because she's the last week of a woman's menstrual cycle, especially people who have this brain type tend to be more irritable. Is that before their period? What no, it's it? before the period. Okay, so the week before their period is when she's so gonna be- two weeks before their period is generally the best time. Do men and women have different brains? Significantly? Wildly so. Wildly so different. this whole thing about you can't put your gender on your medical forms is just insanely stupid. Uh, because gender matters. Like estrogen and testosterone, they matter when it comes to brain function. I published a study on 46,000 scans looking at the differences between male and female brains, and they're wild. Uh, women have much better frontal lobes function, but much better blood flow to the front part of their brain. Which makes them? Which makes them good leaders. 
if you think of impulse control and collaboration and communication. And the one statistic that just hammers this home is who goes to jail? <laughs> Men, 14 times more than women. But women get depressed twice as much as men because their limbic or emotional brain is much busier than the male brain. And that's why in every um, human society, women are primary caretakers for children. Um, women have a bigger nesting instinct. So I told you we moved recently and moving is much harder on women in general than it is in men because they feel like they lose their nest and they have to redo their nest. And I was an army psychiatrist for seven years. And I used to always tell the guys, I'm like, when you move, you stay home and help her put the house together because she's going to be way happier uh, for you. On that impulse control, but I remember reading the statistics that men suffer with gambling addictions and betting addictions significantly more than women. Drug addictions, alcohol, ADD, five times more than women. Um, but women get help because they're not afraid to ask for help. Where for men, it's often a macho thing. It's like, there's nothing the matter with me, which is why women attempt suicide three to four times more than males, but males kill themselves three to five, four times more than women do because men use more violent means and men aren't communicating, I'm in trouble. Saunas, saunas and exercise on the brain. Good, good for the brain? So I'm a huge fan of saunas uh, because uh, the studies mostly from Northern Europe, people who take the most saunas have the lowest incidence of Alzheimer's disease. And I told you about my mercury detoxing is really important. And you can detox in a lot of different ways, but sauna is one of the most effective ways. Um, exercise is you want to stay young, walk like you're late. If you're 80 and you can walk three miles an hour, you have a 90% chance of living until you're 90. If you can only walk a mile an hour, you have a 90% chance you're not going to live until you're 90. So exercise boosts blood flow. It increases uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It increases serotonin, increases dopamine. Um, another interesting thing is, should you do cold plunges? Because cold plunges have been found to fairly dramatically increase dopamine. So you should do cold plunges? Not if you have heart problems. <laughs> so if you have heart problems, I wouldn't do that. But if you have inflammation, if you have pain, if you tend to be depressed, there's evidence cold plunges can be helpful. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.